Um, once, uh, when my now 30-something-year-old son was about three, he asked me for a chocolate milkshake on the way home from preschool. Not before dinner, I said, in my best lecture way. And besides, I said, chocolate really isn't very good for you. But he protested, his voice rising eagerly and earnestly from the back seat of the car. But, but, it's good for your feelings. <laughs> We didn't get the milkshake that day, but his observation triumphed, and to this day, the understanding that chocolate is good for your feelings rules our household. <laughs> so we all know that chocolate is special. For millennia, that's been so. In our time and culture, as in earlier centuries and other cultures, claims abound regarding chocolate's positive effects. What is it about chocolate, chemically and culturally, that makes it so distinctive in our diets, enriching to our emotional lives, and central to our celebrations? Why do we love it so? And what does it do to and for us? And can eating chocolate even be a part of what globally makes us healthy persons? So this medical center, our titled Chocolate, Chocolate, with exclamation marks is happening because there's evidence that chocolate in moderation is good for us. Indeed, it's good in more ways than one for our hearts. And so we invited local chocolatier Tim Gearhart of Gearhart's Fine Chocolates to offer insights into chocolate's appeal and effects and to give us a glimpse and at the end of the hour a little taste of his local craft of artisan chocolate making. Um, I need to let you know that Mr. Gerhardt has no financial relationship with any commercial health care goods or services discussed in this presentation. Welcome, Tim Gerhardt. Ah, well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Childress. I appreciate the, uh, the really nice uh, opening uh, remarks, and, um, and I thank you very much for the invite. It's a uh, it's an honor to be here, and um, I don't know a ton about the um, uh, the uh, medical hour here, but I think I looked in enough to know that it's a uh, it's a it's a fascinating um, uh, group of folks you all get to come out, and so I'm honored to uh, to be one of them today. Um, so I think I, I think the important thing, or what, uh, the first thing I'd like to probably do is uh, give you all a little bit of a spoiler alert and a little disclaimer: is that I'm not a doctor. And I'm, I have no, uh, I'm not a researcher, I'm not a historian, so I don't think we're going to unravel the great, uh, all the mysteries of chocolate in uh, 30, 40 minutes today. But, um, but I am someone who, uh, I, 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 love, um, I love chocolate, and I love what I do, and I love, um, I'm, uh, I count my blessings all the time to get to do something like uh, what I do, and, and not a lot of folks get to do it, so it's a... Uh, you know, it's a it's a special special thing. Um, the um, uh, I think for what I maybe lacked in um, book uh, book time and uh, spending my time, you know, just studying the you know the uh, uh, the compounds of chocolate, uh, the microscope. I think I. I did make up with watching expressions of people and for 15 years, and um, you know, I got to see, not always I was up in the kitchen an awful lot, but um, I certainly had many of opportunities to uh, see folks, uh, see their expressions change and their, you know, the, the eyes closing for a second and kind of taking them to another place. And, um, and I, I, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a special thing and, and I, um, you know, I, I, like I said, I really enjoy every every bit of it. Um, I have to, you know, my other little uh, minor disclaimer is that, you know, I'm used to, uh, you normally would have a, a whisk or a spoon or something in my hand uh, doing a demo or something like that, something I'm a little more um, natural, uh, it's a little more natural to me. Um, but uh, funny enough, I had a, um, the last demo I did was in Richmond a couple of months, about a month or two, right before Christmas. And I learned a very valuable lesson on um, how how much how important it is n not to hold a mic during a cooking demo. <laughs> um, so it's very you know, a little word to the wise: don't. Because I think at one point I literally had the mic on the table, 
and I was whisking and speaking into the mic. So, yeah, I think this will probably be a little easier. Good news, the chocolates are already done. They're in bags for you all. So we're gonna, we don't have to worry about uh, how they're gonna come out. So, um, so I, I thought um, a good place to start would be, um, you know, I get a lot of, uh, yeah, and I understand that it's a it's an odd thing that I you know to, the profession of chocolate making is, is a little unusual, not as unusual uh, now as it was maybe you know 15, 20 years ago. But I think there was a, um, uh, but I, you know, I think it's a it's a um, certainly a big part of how how it all came to be with me personally, and I, I think it's a worth a quick little review or, or a quick chat about how I got into the business and a little bit about you know all that. Um, uh, I'm, about, I'm out, always been into food, of course. I mean, any cook um, worth their salt will, um, you know, have to. I, I mean, it's just, you know, it's a, a bit of a DNA thing, and I think uh, it's a very interesting difference between, you know, the savory cooks and the, the, the pastry and uh, the bakers in the back. You know, it's, it's two different, totally two different personalities. The, the, the savory folks, um, you know, they love that kind of, you know, the flash of the pan and the the um, the excitement of working on the line, and then there's the uh, you know the pastry folks are a little more calculated. We're a little more you know A plus B equals C. It's a you know it's a it's a it's all uh, you know there's a lot of chemistry in that sense, and it's a uh, it's a very different different uh, personality. But um, so I've, I've I've always loved food, and I've always um, found my um, uh, I felt pretty early on that it was going to be a place where I was going to land in some way. Now, chocolate, I certainly had no was you know I was uh, I was definitely a uh, you know a, a, a Reese's peanut butter kid, and I wasn't you know my parents were not world globe traveling uh, you know Belgian chocolate shops with us or anything like that. I mean you know I um, it was something that I very much just um, uh, got a great interest in quickly and and um, a little bit of a uh, perfect. You know, perfect place, perfect time. But so I ended up. Um, uh, I had this really great idea. You know, I floated around um, in uh, uh, high school and this and that, and um, did really well on the subjects I liked, um, and which was not too many. But um, I, you know, I kind of uh, um, I found a you know a real. Um, uh, I had this idea that like, you know if I could. I worked in a couple of local places. I was started out as a dishwasher at Dooners uh, in the '80s, mid '80s, and you know cooking was a very different thing back then. It wasn't you know the you know, there weren't uh, celebrity chefs and uh, you know it was a very um, it just wasn't like it is now. Not that I'm saying you know it, it, it was a little more of a kind of island of the misfits so, uh, uh, more than it is now, um, and which is not a good nor a bad or whatever it just is what it is and um, but it was always you're always were uh, gonna find some very interesting people in the kitchen back then and um, so I had this really great idea that I was going to um, join the Marines as a cook and so nobody joins the Marines as a cook it's a very very unusual most people are made cooks in the Marines and they uh, you know they kind of um, uh, you know, it's not a, uh, in the end, it ended up being a very important part of everything, but it was not, uh, I think there was, I mean, you know, 50 cooks that I worked with over the years, I mean, there were maybe two of us that actually signed up to be cooks. Um, so, but, you know, I have to say it actually was a pretty logical, um, it was it was interesting, it had a real, had a real, um, uh, you know, it was real cooking. It was from scratch, and it was, um, and it kind of set a few things uh, early on in motion that ended up being really important to what I do now. I mean, there is this, uh, this repetitive nature uh, doing, um, uh, you know, constantly, um, uh, you know, whatever, whether it was omelets or whatever we were making, it was lots of them in a row and, and it had that kind of that repetitious nature, which was great. And, you know, obviously the um, uh, attention to the details was a big part of it. And that ended up being a big, a big thing of what I do or a big piece of it. So. You know, it was a real, um, uh, you know, it just made a lot of sense and uh, for me at the time. And so I went away, uh, left Charlottesville. Well, I more or less grew up around here, but um, we moved here in the 80s and when I was started high school. And um, we, um, so I ended up going, 
uh, all over the place. I was with a uh, infantry unit mostly, and and um, got to, got the opportunity to see a lot of the a lot of very interesting places. And it was a great, you know, all in all, it was a it was a good time to be in the Marines in the big picture. I mean, as far as that, you know, there was um, um, it was a uh, it was a you know it was a um, it was a fascinating time, and I, I definitely learned a lot and got to you know. It's always good when you can expand your horizons, and, and again, as a, you know, uh, it was just it made um, uh, it, it was a, a just an important piece. Of it. So, um, and you know, I always kind of had in the back of my mind that you know, pastry and, and baking was something I wanted to eventually uh, continue on with, and I ended up going um, into um, uh, research in culinary schools. Went to went to culinary school in New York, um, and um, uh, uh, specialized. Um, the field of study was kind of specialized in baking and pastry, and and um, and then went to work as a pastry chef for ten, eight, eight, I guess about eight years. Um, came back to Charlottesville here and there, and, and um, uh, you know it was a um, you know chocolate was always part of it. It was always the um, uh, kind of after dinner kind of menu D's or petty fours. Um, so chocolate was always something that I dabbled in. I, I had a basic knowledge of, but it wasn't something that, um, I was never making chocolates on the level that we do um, at the shop now. I mean, it was a couple, you know, a hundred pieces would have been a lot of chocolates to make that. Um, but it was a, um, uh, but it was, you know, a, 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 again, another important stepping stone to what, you know, to what, um, to where we, where, where I ended up. The, um, so um, probably the most important part of it was uh, I ended up meeting my business partner, um, uh, Bill Hamilton, uh, when he was getting ready to open up Hamilton's at First of Maine uh, in the mid-90s. And um, it would just kind of set some of the wheels in motion again. And um, I worked for him for about a year and a half. He was a great, great, uh, great cook and a great uh, mentor in a lot of ways. And we got to... Um, Talking one day about a chocolate shop and how great Charlottesville would, what, you know, what a perfect little town it would be for something like that. The, the kind of, you know, the university has a lot, um, you know, in a lot of ways has a lot to do with what we do. And and I mean, it's kind of this influx of well-traveled, booty uh, folks, you know, that will, you know, there is a is a, our kind of a customer, and you know, it's people that look for uh, <coughs> something special like. You know whether it's a loaf of bread or artisan bread or whether it's a, you know, a chocolate. So um, you know it's been a, um, uh, it was good. And then um, so we, um, you know, we talked about here and there. I went on my way again, uh, kind of traveling around. I spent some time in Europe and and um, uh, gosh, everywhere from a, um, you know, a ranch in Wyoming all the way to um, back up to Boston for a, a good couple of years and. A very strange, um, you know, it's the great thing about food and cooking is that you can, it's a craft and something you can, once you learn some basics and, and it, it, you can do it anywhere. It's, you know, it's, a, uh, it's a great business to be in sometimes. And um, a lot of the time, especially now. <laughs> but, um, and then so we ended up uh, reconnecting years later, uh, just chit-chatting and it was a great time for me personally to, uh, you know, I'd been through the, the the, the game a long time and hotels and this and that. I really wanted to do something on my own. And back then, you know, pastry when you uh, pastry chefs, when somebody would say, hey, you know, when you time for you to strike out on your own, people would be like, oh great, where's your where are you going to open your bakery? Because that's all there was. I mean, there was pastry chefs became bakers or they opened up a pastry shop and then they made pastries, and uh, makes sense. Um, but chocolate then um, isn't what it's like now. Um, and I'm not saying that you know Gearhart's didn't wasn't um, a groundbreaking, um, you know, we weren't uh, on the national scene, and we were not the first to do some of the things that uh, that people do, but we certainly were one of the first in the, in, in this, certainly in this area, in Virginia, um, and, um, you know, I, uh, it's a changed business, you know, when, when we started, you can count on one hand how many artisan chocolatiers there were, um, and, you know, now there's I can't even honestly I keep track anymore. I have former employees that have opened up shops, um, and um, which is um, you know which which is great. I mean you know I, I love the um, I love anytime that something is you know brings more to uh, uh, more to the people that you know so, you know it brings it more accessible. It's that's a uh, 
that's a great thing. Um, I, you know, I, I think it's a uh, yeah, we do something very special, and it's um, it's cool to uh, to see it keep going, and it does. And now it's kind of even moved into this bean bar kind of phenomenon, and um, which is people making chocolate from scratch. And this is very different than what I do. I don't make chocolate. I don't buy beans and turn it into chocolate, and then you know chocolates. I I take I buy chocolate and, and we turn it into chocolates and we make caramels and toffees and things of that nature. But it's a very different uh, business, and um, so um, but I can I can appreciate what that brings, but it's just not uh, what we do. So uh, so 2001 we opened up over on the, on Main Street um, and. Um, it's been a heck, of a heck of a ride ever since. We've um, kind of give a little bit of reference. We were, you know, I say this all the time, but it's true. I mean, it started with, you know, two forks in a bowl. And um, I uh, was probably hand dipping 500 pieces a day would be a good day um, back then. And nowadays we make upwards of, depending on the time of the year and this and that, but we make upwards of 12 to 14,000 uh, pieces a day. So um, we can, yeah, you know, we can pump out some chocolate now, um, and you know, it's a, uh, it's balanced. Trust me, to, to kind of make, remember what what set you apart in the beginning, and to, to what, uh, you know, um, you know, to, but yeah, you know, you're also growing a business, and you have people's livelihood at stake. Yeah, you know, we have twenty some, you know, twenty employees, and, and it's a um, it's a changed world now. But we're uh, again, I, I count myself very lucky to. To do something, um, so you know, it's, it's it's just a it's a great it's a, not a bad gig. I'm not gonna lie to you. you know. um, so I thought maybe we would, um, you know, I, I would talk a little bit. Again, I mean, I, I'm, I think I think there's some. It, it's a it's a very big subject. There's a lot to to you know to uh, why you know why chocolate um, has the effect it does on people. I think that there are, I, I can only really give. Again, I mean, I, I was interested in, you know, I think it's a, it's a great exercise for me personally um, because I'm a technician, I'm a cook, I'm someone, you know, I, I'm not, uh, I don't look at it quite the way maybe some other folks do. Um, you know, it's more of a technical thing with me. And I like, um, you know, my, my biggest challenges are, you know, making more chocolate, uh, you know, being more efficient or being, um, uh, continuing to, you know, to, uh, you know, make maintain the integrity of the product, but still grow as the business. And and frankly, the creativity is is the is why you know is what keeps us coming back. And that's why you know we love you know the creative element is, is super uh, important. So you know, but I do not to say that I you know again I'm not not being a a, a, a great mind in the, uh, you know as far as the history of chocolate and this and that. But I do think there are some some interesting points and some. And the same goes on the medical side of it. I do think there were some very interesting um, uh, things that you know, some some scientific, actual you know, documented you know, studies that were is really connected, and it really did make sense. And then I kind of want to bring it back to what, how my, what I see, and what you know, what my experiences have been, and how it all, how I felt, um, <coughs> kind of comes in, you know, into um, you know, into my world, but. Um, Let's see. Um, I think you know. I think the um, again, chocolate. Uh, you know, a Google search will show you how complicated and how complex chocolate is, and the compounds and everything is it. You know, obviously, you know the the. Uh, um, I think I always originally just kind of knew about the antioxidants and this and that. And I was like, okay. You know that's 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 nice and everything, but um, as I started digging, I was just amazed at the amount of stuff that I was that, that was coming up. I mean, and it was really fascinating stuff. I mean, dopamine was um, probably one of the more prevalent ones, and, and really something that I, I felt like um, that I could kind of relate to a lot. Um, you know, they uh, they were saying how the the feelings that. Um, are the result of our brain uh, releasing chemicals in response to each chocolate experience. And the, the experience of eating chocolate um, results in a feel-good neurotransmitters like dopamine being released in the brain. So how it, the, you know, the trigger, um, uh, you know, being chocolate. And um, dopamine is obviously released when you're doing things you like. 
And um, you know, this reward circuit is partially genetics, but it also changes and responds to specific preferences um, based on your own experiences, your own personal experiences. Um, so dopamine helps us remember positive experiences, and once we have learned a positive association with chocolate, um, it helps us kind of feed the anticipation, even when we something as simple as smelling it. Or, um, uh, you know, uh, chocolate is the, one of my favorite things about chocolate is that it just hits all the senses. You know, you have the, even something as simple as like that little bar that, I, that we're giving out. Um, you know, just the you know the, the, the snap of it, the instant you know the the, the you know the hearing, and then obviously the, the vision of you know you eat something. With the rule number one in cooking. Um, you know, you eat something long before you put it in your mouth, and, and it's, there's this, um, you know, a perfectly shiny piece of chocolate, um, you know, it's just a, it's a no-brainer, you know? Um, and then obviously, we haven't even talked about taste or, you know, taste buds and all that. I mean, it's a, um, uh, you know, which is, it's all, so that's just one of my, you know, we're just so lucky to, to work with something um, that's just, such, you know, so wonderful. Um, and let's see, the, um, so if you eat chocolate and enjoy it, then every time you eat it, you strengthen your dopamine uh, response. And that behavior uh, necessary to get that feeling back again. So um, I think it's safe to say that you probably don't remember you know, the first time that you had chocolate, but your brain probably does. And the, um, uh, you probably didn't have to learn to like chocolate. Um, but it's likely that you received it as a treat, you know, maybe a grandma's or, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, the holidays. Um, and, I, you know, again, it's really, it's another kind of piece of the puzzle here is this kind of cultural, um, you know, uh, aspect of it. And we'll talk a little bit about that, too, when we get, I'll, I'll just mention a few important his historical facts about chocolate. But I think that there is something to say about the, you know, the cultural, um, you know, how we look at chocolate. Um, and uh, you know, uh, it, 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 it's just a, it's a, it's, again, it's a, it's a, a piece, a piece of the puzzle. Um, and let's see the, um, and you know, it's especially in in the United States, we're one of the the largest consuming countries in the world of chocolate. Um, and um, you know, I think people eat some ridiculous amount. <laughs> Yeah, it's like 25 pounds in, in, a, in a year or something crazy, and, and which is awesome. Don't, <laughs> don't not, not, not knock it, not, just judgment free, but I'm just saying. The, uh, uh, but it's true, I mean, you know, so there's, you know, there really are some, some, uh, some pretty deep, deep things there. Um, so the um, uh, theobromine and caffeine um, is, um, is a, um, uh, it's certainly a, a, yet another uh, part of it. Um, the uh, darker, the darker the chocolate, the better. The higher the, you know, everybody kind of knows that. You know that the um, <coughs> dark chocolate is, is is really what we're talking mostly about here because of the, um, uh, it just, uh, you know, it's the higher cocoa liquor and um, which is kind of gets into the uh, how how chocolate is made and. Um, but it has the higher cocoa uh, liquor. It's not actually for, uh, alcoholic. It just is what they call it. It's what the the um, what chocolate what makes chocolate chocolate is the cocoa liquor. And so whenever you've seen in like to kind of give you a real quick kind of base to kind of how to think of think through that is the um, when you go into Whole Foods or Foods of All Nations, you'll see lots of bars, and you always have you ever noticed all the percentages and you know um, what is that all about and um, you know, there. It doesn't mean that it's better. Um, you know, the higher doesn't mean better, it, it, or lower doesn't mean less quality. It just has to do with the the cocoa content. And um, so, the higher the higher the uh, cocoa content, the less room there is for sugar and other um, uh, things that make chocolate you know balanced. So something that's like a, a you know an 80, 90 percent. Uh, percentage is going to be extremely bitter and almost like a baking chocolate kind of thing. Um, I always uh, I love to get the, uh, it never fails, the, uh, I probably once every couple of years I'll get the guy coming in with his girlfriend, maybe his new girlfriend, trying to impress her with his great knowledge of chocolate and, and they always love to say, 
wow, so what do you kind of, what percentage do you all use? And I'm like, oh, well, we may generally use 70%, you know, I love well-balanced and this, well, I've had 95. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's, that's really impressive. <laughs> so, I mean, it just, it, it is a, uh, that's really what that comes from. And it just, the higher the, the higher the cocoa level uh, percentages, the, you know, the content is the, the better. And as far as health benefits. Um, but, so theobromine and caffeine um, are certainly uh, higher in darker chocolate. Um, theobromine can be used as a blood vessel widener and heart stimulant. Um, which kind of, when you think about it, makes sense how they talk about how you can, you know, like letting a piece of chocolate dissolve on your tongue has, um, you know, has four times the, the, um, the surge of, uh, you know, even, you know, like a, 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 you know, something like a kiss or something like that. I mean, there's all these crazy statistics that come up with that, you know, that really, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's fascinating. Um, and but there again, there's science behind it too. I mean, their uh, ability, um, uh, theobromine, theobromine especially, ability to dilate blood vessels and to treat high high blood pressure. Um, and uh, my dentist loved to talk tell me about this just the other couple of weeks ago when I was over. But it also shows promise in um, uh, tooth decay prevention, uh, which I was that was pretty you know that's that's. Uh, I never would have thought that, but um, they're saying how they, um, yet another thing I could talk about at Gear Hearts about how great chocolate is for you. Um, but the, um, uh, they're saying how it actually uh, surpasses fluoride and, and, and you know, obviously will taste better and there's lots of avenues there. Um, this is like my, somewhere my two-year-old and seven-year-old are just jumping for joy. But um, the, um, uh, and yeah, I mean, so there's you know, it's there's some real um, some documented health benefits that are that are just undeniable. Um, the uh, theobromine has a lesser impact on the human nervous system than caffeine, but it stimulates the heart to a greater degree. Um, yeah, theobromine is not addictive uh, per se, but it has been cited as po causing um, possible addiction to chocolate, which I'm not. Sorry about, but the um, <laughs> theobromine has also been identified as one of the compounds contributing to uh, chocolate's role as an aphrodisiac. Um, the um, uh, as a myocardial stimulant, it increases the heartbeat, dilates blood blood vessels, like we talked about, um, uh, causing a reduced blood pressure. Um, and that's they, from most of the findings that I saw, they were talking about it was mostly the flavanols were the main um, driver of that, um, and um, its draining effect allows, allows it to be used to treat cardiac failure, which leads to um, an exacerbated, um, by an excessive accumulation of fluid in the body. So, yeah, there's that. Um, the, um, and this is actually another interesting one about theobromine has a, a cough reducing effect um, that's superior to codeine, which is, um, uh, you know, like, you know, I think that's a, a really, uh, I was kind of surprised by that one as well. Um, so I think my one, another takeaway is just, just a ridiculous amount of opportunities for UVA and Gear Hearts to work together. <laughs> um, the uh, flavonoids um, and, and antioxidants, big, a big part of it. Um, the flavonoids are part of the antioxidants known as polyphenols, polyphenols and are found in a variety of foods, in, um, including dark chocolate, tea, red wine. And these are, you know, it's funny, the more, you, the, the more I looked into a lot of this stuff, I had all these moments of like, okay, yep, yep, yeah, that, I saw, I see that, that makes sense. And this was just another one of those ones, these things that we kind of already knew, you know, I think, um, but it um, uh, decreases LDL, uh, you know, the bad cholesterol, oxidation, um, reduces the risk of blood clots, Reduces uh, blood flow in arteries, or, excuse me, increases uh, blood flow in arteries and the heart. Uh, may improve mood and pleasure by boasting serotonin and endorphin levels. Um, and uh, regular intake is associated with better um, uh, cognitive performance in the elderly. And um, contains a number of minerals, uh, including calcium, magnesium, and potassium. So, chock, chock full uh, good stuff for you, and, and it's a, uh, um, 
you know, I think it's part of the, uh, you know, it's a, it, there's just, it's just a uh, undeniable connections there. Now, I think what the, uh, another kind of flip side of it too is like, how much do you actually have to eat for all this to really be, you know, to, to, to be true? I, you know, I think that's, the, the, you know, I think there, there's another takeaway I had from some of the from looking, reading about a lot of this is that, you know, there is some, uh, there's nothing, you know, there's some, they have lots of theories and lots of um, some good studies, but there's not, you know, it, it's, it can be a bit of a stretch to say, you know, a one ounce chocolate, how much, you know, I think, you know, you'll read a whole, like for instance, I read a whole article about, um, about the good, the great things of chocolate, but then it was saying at the end about you basically would have to consume like 20 pounds of chocolate to, to get all of these great benefits, and it's like, that's not exactly reasonable, you know, so, um, all right, so then um, just a couple of, um, I, I thought some, you know, a little the, uh, history um, I think is a, um, is helpful in kind of understanding the way um, how chocolate um, has gotten to where it is now and, and um, what it means to, you know, societies, whether it's, you know, our um, modern day or, you know, all the way to, um, uh, you know, back, way back in the day. Um, so chocolate, um, you know, we're talking about 4,000 years here is, is, was when it kind of originated and started, um, you know, the um, uh, Indian tribes, I mean, they found um, evidence from uh, as far back as 1900 BC. Um, Aztecs, um, and this is about some of the stuff I was, you know, again, you kind of know about some of this, but it's just, the more you, when you read it and kind of try to wrap your head around it, it just is, a little mind blowing, but um, how they would view something is what we think of as you know, chocolate tastes great, I love it, but you know, don't think of uh, maybe some of this stuff. But um, the Aztecs believe that cacao seeds uh, were the gift from, from God uh, of wisdom, and the seeds had so much value that they were basically viewed as currency um, and um, originally prepared only as a drink, and as a matter of fact. Um, the you know you've probably heard that before about how it, I mean it was uh, uh, um, what we know is chocolate started out nothing like um, chocolate um, then and the um, uh, what was it? the um, oh basically that the you know that's the how we think of chocolate and you know the, what 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 is considered modern chocolate is only really responsible for about like eight or ten percent of the history of chocolate. So, um, you know, for thousands of years, it was basically known as a, a frothy drink that I'm pretty sure most of, if I served at my shop, I think people would be a little grossed out. Um, it's, uh, you know, we're talking about spices, uh, wine, and, and my personal favorite, corn puree. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's a, um, I think it, it's obviously it's changed a lot, but it had um, lots of value to them, um, you know, the aphrodisiac powers, um, and even giving them, um, you know, sh strength. And, and uh, you know, again, you have to put it in context. It was a very different time back then, and, and um, you know, it, something like that probably was very vital. Um, so both the Mayans and the Aztecs believed that the cacao bean had magical or even divine. Um, uh, properties uh, suitable for use in most sacred rituals of birth, marriage, and death. So, um, the um, it really wasn't until um, you know the 16th century that the drink um, that was most prevalent in Central and South America um, really um, uh, became known to Europeans. Um, so, and obviously through exploration and all the you know the trade and. Um, was quickly adapted and started its kind of evolution to what we know as chocolate now. Um, and that really involved a lot of um, inventions and ways to um, change and manipulate chocolate, um, kind of breaking it down and bringing it back. And so the, um, and to, 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 you know, to our taste and, and kind of the, the great thing about chocolate is how it, you know, it just has, um, it, you know, it just continues to this kind of evolution. But, um, the um, you know a couple uh, um, fi you know figuring out in the uh, early uh, 19th, 19th century adding alkaline salts uh, to reduce the bitterness and um, the and then the fact of learning how to uh, uh, um, 
take out the cocoa butter and um, separate with the liquor and, and to, uh, to, which is basically known as the Dutch cocoa kind of um, method. It was really the, 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 the hinge, you know, the, the, the turning point for uh, making chocolate as we know it now, because it really, again, was able to break it down and then separate it and then put it back together um, and then using um, things that were a little more, you know, uh, uh, to, to modern taste at the time. So obviously people wanted sugar and, you know, they slowly started adding more sugar. Um, but, um, you know, so it was a, um, it was a uh, important, um, you know, there's some very important um, uh, Parts of the process there that um, kind of got chocolate a little closer to what we what we know as chocolate now, um, and you know even um, and I you know it's, it's a continuing process you know I, I can I can see it change all the time um, you know even even in the 20 years of, of the artisan chocolate world you can see what what people are doing with chocolate now is 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 um, uh, you know what they were doing 50 years ago is are very different things you know I mean. It's a, um, it's a, it's a, it's on, you know, it continues to grow. Um, so let's see. Um, so I think, you know, again, how do we, how do we put all this, you know, how do we connect all these dots, and how do we, um, uh, what's this all mean? So I think on the one hand, you see that chocolate contains many beneficial compounds. Um, the, um, you know, again, how much one would have to eat is a little up for debate, but um, you know. And I guess I also kind of had this realization a few times of like, were people, you know, was this a situation where people were just trying to find something good and something that they already love? You know what I mean? Like, it's chocolate, come on. I mean, you know, it's hard to, um, uh, you know, were they just kind of searching for something just to, to you know, you got to wonder a little bit there. But um, on the other hand, I mean, there is true science. And there's, you know, um, it's a, um, you know, it's, it's been, um, Universally agreed upon, you know, on some things we touched on already. Um, but I think, I think the way that I kind of digested all this and the, what I, um, how I, you know, my main takeaway. Um, and again, I, I'm just trying to put my as a cook and this as, um, uh, you know, the kind of the, the guy in the in the, you know, on the on the lines kind of thing, you know, in, in the trenches and. Getting to um, see the you know getting to see those uh, um, those results and the and the expressions of people and the the, the joy that people um, you know get to um, you know, have with chocolate um, you know I, I take what I personally found to be the most compelling is you know that power of the nostalgia or the you know the recollection um, I, I, I'm I'm always um, or I'm never surprised at the amount of people that come in. To the shop, and again, I have no, I don't um, have as much interaction as I used to, but I, I still have a good bit, and I, you know, I, I like to I obviously do talks here and there, and get to chat with people about chocolate, of course, and um, but I'm never surprised about when people bring up, you know, a story of um, oh, you know, my I, I remember making fudge with. You know, oh, I said the F word. Uh, the, um, the, uh, you know, I love, you know, I love making, you know, working with grandma and, and you know, I just, it, you know, takes, I just, you know, and it's even something, something like that, or even the, you know, evoking memories of, of, you know, maybe traveling around and hitting the, you know, finding a great little, you know, uh, chocolate shop in Paris. But people just love to talk about. They love to connect the memories to the, to the, you know, to the. You know, and, I, and, I, and that's, again, that's one of my favorite things about chocolate, is that ability um, to kind of bridge, bridge like that, and, and, and it almost becomes like a living thing. You know, it's like this. Um, people have a, um, uh, you know, they're they're able to have these wonderful memories, and and, and I, I truly do think that you, you kind of relive them uh, all the time. You know, when you when you're, something is. Uh, yeah, and of course, as a, as a um, you know, you like to um, I don't I don't want to say push the boundaries, but I like to do new things and try new flavors and do things. But um, but you know, I think that the, that that basic um, uh, you know that 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 foundation is there, and I think that people uh, and that's one thing I you know I can honestly say I you know I, I witness that every day. But um, the um, 
Yeah, it's, it's funny because I mean I have a very similar um, as I get older and and um, kind of I, I also I often have the same kind of um, moments like that with music and uh, the um, and I love the the fact that that chocolate even t tops that with even more hitting more of your senses and and the um, you know whether it's in the, whether it's you know uh, you're conscious of these things or unconscious you know these are unconscious kind of reactions but I think it's I think it's still there. Um, I think it's uh, fair enough to say that you know um, chocolate has changed drastically from what the Mayans or Aztecs um, you know knew, um, or um, and I seriously doubt they were reflecting on fond memories um, back then. But I think you know I think that there was um, I think it's just one of those um, one of those pieces and and um, um, you know that had, it, there's the cultural the religious, the um, um, you know, kind of aspect to it that we just, um, you know, I don't even know if we could even fathom in, in, in our in our modern time. But um, and, I, and I think you know, I think what is the most, uh, what's really, you know, for me personally, what's 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 amazing, and what I, um, you know, it just constantly boggles my mind when. Not only are people, you know, they have these wonderful memories of chocolate and, and all these really, um, uh, you know, they love to tell, tell their stories and, 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 and kind of re, uh, rekindle some of the, you know, what chocolate meant to them. And I have those too, frankly. I mean, I, you know, people ask me all the time, um, not, you know, like, oh, well, um, what's your favorite chocolate? And, and um, you know, so I always, and I, it becomes a, a thing with me too that I, I think of like a, uh, it kind of goes back to uh, a fond memory I had as a kid going and, and um, uh, there was a local drugstore where I used to live and, and you know, they had these really great chocolate malted shakes. And so like the malted milk caramel, the malted milk uh, hazelnut that we do um, kind of always brings me, you know, gives me that kind of sensation a little bit that, you know, the, the, um, the, the creaminess, the, the malt and the, um, you know, the, um, I just, you know, I just, I don't know. It just takes me back every time, and I, and and the, um, I think what it always kind of um, just blows me away is when people not only do they have these great memories, but then they start talking about you know we're, we've had this great opportunity to be in the community now for you know 15 plus years or almost 15 years, and and then they start to like have our they have memories of our stuff, and that just it's just amazing to me. Like I have people come in and say, you know we uh, you know you, oh my god you guys are like our you know, um, you know, you're our, our our tradition. You're one of our holiday traditions. You know, I was I went to undergrad here or whatever, and um, you know we were. Um, I brought him home one year, and now now I'm married with. You know, I got kids of my own, and we have. You know, it's just you know, this is. You know, these memories of of um, when it becomes so personal, and you know, and then it's something that that I you know that I'm involved in. Um, you know, that's that's really special, and I I, I love. I, I love that about um, you know chocolate. I think just has that has that power to to really um, you know to, to bring um, uh, you know bring people together and 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 I just uh, you know it's a it's a powerful thing. So, but I you know I, um, I, that's pretty much my kind of my take on on you know what uh, um, you know how I feel um, you know chocolate has you know. Our, you know, the power of chocolate and what, you know, trying to put it all into a, you know, a tight little 30-minute talk. But I, I, uh, um, I know you all. Um, I think they were going to go and do some questions, and I'm happy to chit chat about any other um, any other questions you all have. Thank you. have time for comments and questions and um, thank you so much we can go in any number of directions there are um, comparisons to make between the kind of expert technical craft that goes on in chocolate making that corresponds to what healthcare practitioners often are engaged in there's creativity um, there's also working with uh, volume and also with quality control um, but you may have some other opinions, and I saw a hand up in the back. Um, please tell us who you are and um, ask your question. 
Hi, thanks for the talk. I'm actually I'm a fourth year med student. I was wondering why you hate the fudge. <laughs> I don't hate fudge, I just, <laughs> I don't know, I mean, there is, uh, I don't hate fudge. I, I, think, I think it's, I'm, you know, I, it's just not what I do, but I, I think it's a, uh, you know, it, it's a, it certainly it can, was a springboard for a lot of folks into the world of chocolate, so I will not, uh, I was joking. <laughs> I'm a little sarcastic, so you all haven't figured that out yet. I'm Jeff Weiss, retired physician, and uh, the question is, uh, where is uh, cacao principally uh, produced commercially, uh, where do you get yours, and is the supply secure? Yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, it's, um, you know, it's funny, you hear a lot of the, um, uh, you know, anytime there's a story in the news about, you know, the, the world is running out of chocolate, or there's some issue, uh, a shipping issue, or whatever, the, all the... The story of the day might be. Um, the, I, I can honestly say, in 15 years, I've not had a single interruption of chocolate in the sense of um, like a supply kind of thing. Um, there, now, there's certainly logistical things on the, on the one hand, but that's not um, not what we deal with. Um, the cool thing about the great thing about us, um, or as a business, the, on the business side of it, is that as we grow. Um, we buy more and more chocolate, and it enables me. You know, we have. I, I don't. I don't take price increases lightly to to my customers, or um, and um, so we try very hard to only do it when we have to. And um, and obviously, if you read the news, uh, any given time, every couple of years, there's some crazy story about you know some big problem on the way, or you know we're eating too much or something. But I think that in the end, it's um, we continue to buy more and keeps my pricing better and better because I'm buying more and more of it and it enables us to really um, uh, you know not have to pass it on to the consumer which is uh, great um, but uh, most uh, an awful lot of chocolate is grown um, in uh, um, I mean it's grown within a, a, a couple of degrees of the equator basically um, so there's only so you know which is a, a whole nother ball game when you get into the uh, you know, local chocolate kind of thing, the, the local chocolate question. It's like, you know, it last time I checked, you know, we're not that close to the equator. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a manufacturing um, can be done anywhere, but where the beans are grown are basically in, that, in those areas. Ivory Coast is a big um, supply area, has a lot of political and um, other turmoil, um, of course. Um, unfortunately, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, it's one of those, um, in any, uh, you know, commodity, you know, there's going to be a, a, an unfortunate side to it. And um, my job is, and one something that we took very seriously uh, from the beginning was um, making it a, a, you know, making a point of it to work with the most reputable, best companies that we could um, find. And to actually, we literally wrote letters to all of them when we started. Um, and continue the chat as we move along, but um, or, you know, had conversations about you know understanding um, you know how important it was to us that it was um, you know um, a responsible product and came from you know um, they had the same beliefs that we had. So my name is Karen Knight, and I was glad to see Hi. I was glad to see uh, the movie Chocolat on your list of references, yeah, sure. and just like, put a plug in for that movie. If folks haven't seen it, it's in a book, and it brings out the sensuality of chocolate and chocolate making right. uh, in a beautiful way. Your particular chocolate to me is just one of my favorites because it's got a silkiness to it, and I, I don't know if that's a trade secret, but. How do you get that silkiness? And when I eat one of yours, I almost feel like it has a liqueur in it. Yeah. In the literal sense of alcohol. Sure. Well, some of them certainly do. Oh, um, so it depends on what exactly <laughs> your. Um, we do different products, of course. We have different. Um, we do. You know, there's obviously solid pieces of chocolate, like what we're um, showing off today. Um, and then there's um, truffles and ganaches. A, a truffle, um, basically. The, the word truffle is just kind of taken on a whole new meaning in this country, but a true truffle is basically just a, ra a rolled round chocolate that usually is in cocoa powder and looks like a truffle mushroom. And um, so, uh, but a ganache 
um, which is most of our chocolate. The reason I bring all that up is because a, a ganache is basically um, a, is, are the fillings that we, you know, that's what is inside the chocolate. So we, there are lots of different ways to make chocolates um, in the, you know, confections. And um, there are, you know, you can make molds and then you could fill them and, um, you know, that could be a finished product or you can make, you know, ganaches or, um, which is what I do. Most, most of the stuff we do is our freestanding kind of ganaches and then we uh, enrobe them or coat them in chocolate. So it kind of depends on what you're talking about, but they, uh, which, what product. It but, comes with a beautiful diamond, the golden chocolate diamonds on top. Oh, well, so it's like a, one of our actual chocolates. Yes. So yeah, that's, that's um, uh, yeah, it's edible uh, cocoa butter and uh, those designs, the transfer sheets that you're talking about. Um, but they are, um, but yeah, I mean, it's all, it, um, so that is, you know, that's just, um, uh, I would say it's a trade secret, but it's uh, a lot of practice. And, you know, we've, uh, um, it's funny because we haven't, our recipes are um, literally have not, they're, they're exactly the same when we were making a hundred, you know, 500 pieces a day. They're exactly the same as they are now when we're making 12,000. And, um, and we, I have more people doing it and they're doing it a lot longer and, um, you know, parts, you know, it's, it's a full-time gig for a couple of people. Um, but, you know, that was, again, one of the challenges of kind of maintaining that. And, and we, you know, as a, I look back on some years and I'm like, oh, I wish I could have 2006 back. I mean, that was a, you know, maybe we grew too fast. Maybe we, you know, there were times, you know, it's a constant battle of, you know, again, kind of um, perfecting it and being able to pull it off every time. You know, I always say this, but it's, it really is true that, you know, chocolate, um, well, it's not, it's not obviously rocket science, but it takes a certain kind of person to that repetitive kind of nature of it, you know, um, that just, you know, there's a, absolutely some OCD going on there, there's no doubt about it. Um, but there's this kind of, um, you know, when someone comes in in June, you know, one of our slowest weeks in the summer, um, you know, in some, some random week, you know, they have a mint julep um, and they try and they, you know, they say, oh, I, you know, I love this, I, you know, I can taste the mint and, and fresh mint and blah, 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 which is really great. Problem is, it has to look and taste exactly the same in the busiest days of our, you know, in Christmas, at Christmas time in December. So there's that constant, you know, fight to have them perfect every single time, no matter what. And my employees, you know, they get really sick of hearing that, but it's a, a really important piece of it. I mean, it's got to be exactly the same, and it's got to be perfect over and over. So, yes, hi. Hi. Hey, um, I'm Kim. Wait, uh, there's one question there, and then I'll bring the mic to you. Sorry, I'm Kim, and I worked in the chocolate factory that was independently owned and operated for, I don't know, seven years when I was in college. And so I have a real appreciation for what you do, um, although it was a lot different. Like you say, yours is a lot more glamorous. Um, so I don't... Um, Please. <laughs> My man for his, uh, where is it? <laughs> um, but so my question was, I know that they had at the time like upwards of 26 grades of chocolate and they used the highest grade to enrobe or cover their chocolates as well. And I wondered if that was still somewhat the case. And then you sort of touched on this, but your recipes, you said you started with your recipes and they're still the same. Like what, how often do you create the new chocolate? Sure. You know? um, so yeah, I don't, we don't, certainly don't grade I, I don't look, we don't look at it like that. I mean, everything that I buy is, I, as far as like, um, you know, top quality is the name of the game. So ingredients are everything when, when you know, um, so when you're trying to, um, uh, you, know, um, you know, when you're starting with the best, you know, that's a certainly a good springboard. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know, like, I don't look, we don't look at, there are certainly products, um, you know, whether it be, um, you know, viscosity or fat content or certain things, certain chocolates are better for certain, uh, you know, certain um, you know, procedures. And like, for instance, like, we only, you know, like our enrobing chocolate is, um, uh, is a little higher um, in um, uh, um, cocoa percentage because, you know, we want, it has to be, per, you know, the, the, the um, you know, the way it melts is going to be different than, say, a 60% or a, a, a 55%. So there are, you know, um, so we don't quite look at it like that, um, but I, I see, I can see where you're coming from. 
Um, and as far as with creation, and uh, you know, you're right. I, I mean, I, I think that um, you know, again, I think people get into this business, um, you know, um, because they love that creative element. And um, it, there are years, and you know, it's kind of what I was joking about earlier about you know, wanting some of those years back because we all we were we were just struggling to make more and more chocolate and, and keep up with demand. Um, and um, the uh, you know, I think that you sometimes find yourself lost. Um, when you're just trying to, um, you know, kind of in a creative rut, you know what I mean? Not, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're um, you don't have the opportunity or the time to be able to spend uh, the luxury to do that. Um, and um, it was uh, so as the business grew, and, and um, I've had I have lots of long, long time employees, and um, it, it has enabled us to, um, or to enabled me to have the time now to get to play around and do have, you know, we'll, we kind of go through cycles, I'll be honest with you. You know, like last couple of years ago, we would, we had eight product launches and, you know, a couple, you know, in a year and a half. And then, but for, you know, let's see, seven year, eight years of, of our 15 years, we only did our line of chocolates in like one bar. So, I mean, we had basically two products. And so now we have you know 30 or so. Um, so um, it kind of comes and goes in waves, but it's a uh, it's absolutely what I, I it's one of my favorite parts. I mean I love to experiment and um, you know and we get to you know again it's not a, a bad <laughs> bad way to make a living sometimes. You know it's fun. Um, you mentioned that a lot of the work is a bit monotonous. Oh, sorry, I'm Harry. I work in the NICU. Um, that a lot of your work is monotonous and that detail-oriented people who are a little bit OCD really fit well. Yeah. Um, a lot of healthcare is you know, some of the same tasks over and over again, yeah. and the end result may be a great outcome, but the work getting along there may be a little bit dull. So how do you interview for people to make sure that they're a good fit, and how do you keep people you know, excited to keep coming back to work right. in a job where it's the same repetitive right. nature? Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's tough. I mean, I think that there's not a, uh, there's not necessarily a, a test that I, I, I do, <laughs> but I think that we, um, I think you definitely, um, you know, people's backgrounds have a lot to, you know, a lot to show. I mean, it's what they're, um, uh, you know, what, where they come from and the kind of places that they've worked already as, as a part of it. Um, and I, I'm, and honestly, I mean, one of the first things I do is I'm very, very open frank with people and like, look, you know, you're coming in at the, you know, the bottom of the totem pole here. Not that, you know, obviously every job is important and don't, I'm just saying this in the sense of like, you know, your exposure, your first year is going to be, you're going to do the same darn thing for every day for, unfortunately, for the first Christmas season. And that's just how it is because that's when we're in the crunch, you know, this is what we need to focus on. So we have, this is the starting point and then we move along, move along we get to, you know, cross training is a big thing that we do. Um, it's, you know, a big part of it. So that is also, in itself, is a is a big part of the um, breaking up the monotony. And, and that, it's even cool now because we have a um, kind of this full circle kind of thing coming back to pastry. Um, you know, we have a cafe now uh, element at our new shop, um, and at 243B back at our right. <laughs> Um, the uh, and there's a um, so we get to do you know all these you know like I haven't made a we were talking about this earlier but you know, I haven't made a cake or well I guess I've done a cake but croissants or uh, um, you know uh, um, a cupcake or something like that I haven't done in 15 years and to be able to do that again you know, is great and so we constantly are trying to teach people everything so they can you know there's kind of distinctive parts of the process but um, you kind of have to lead them uh, as you know it's, it kind of takes time to, to find each one but. so thank you we've come to the end of our hour and i imagine that some of what tim talked about earlier the anticipatory tasting <laughs> that chocolate is about to end and you can actually taste some on your way out please um take one of the the small individually wrapped bars um with our compliments um, I hope you can join us next week for um, what, what will be the first Joan Ectenkamp Klein Memorial Lecture in the History of the Health Sciences. We have distinguished physician historian Ken Ludmer coming to talk about making the best doctors. 
residency from past to future. Um, again, please join me in thanking Tim Gearhart and. Tim Gearhart.